Hi there, my name is Jacob, member of the team from Ubisend, and today I'm going to be discussing how you can send leads from your chatbot to Airtable uh, CRM. So essentially what this means is I'm going to be talking about how you can set up an integration with the Airtable CRM so that whenever your chatbot engages with a lead, it's going to autonomously send that lead's information into Airtable and it will be stored there without you having to lift a finger. It's quite simple to set up and I'm just going to kind of talk through the main basics of it. Um, basically I'll be using a chatbot that we've already set up in previously and then just discussing how the integration works. If you do want to see how we created this chatbot in full, it does a lot more than just send leads, it also has FAQs, it has um, multiple different conversation threads and also kind of we've got a little bit about the branding there as well. Um, I'll leave the link to that playlist down in the description of this video. It's a full live stream playlist, there's I believe there's six, maybe seven episodes in there and it's Really nice if you do have a Ubisend or you are a Ubisend user, maybe a partner, you can kind of sit down, you can kind of build alongside and kind of learn that way. And it's quite nice kind of just being able to jump in and kind of do it with the live stream on in the background. But anyway, enough about that. What we're talking about today is uh, creating an integration. So what is this integration? It passes leads to Airtable CRM. Let's just go through it and just show how this looks for the user. And at the same time on my screen, we'll also have the lead appearing in the Airtable CRM. So if I um, just head over and I'll just say, I want to learn about the SEO services, because this is essentially a little bit of a kind of digital digital marketing design agency chatbot here and this we've said we want to learn about the Airtable services and then it says blah blah, blah. there's a lot you can do about the um, full page website audit up to 20,000 pages and blah 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 I want to make an inquiry okay so now it's going to t put us in touch with some of the SEO experts they just need a few details what's my name let's just go along the names of I'll just make up a fake name here I'm gonna be Dave and it says, nice to meet you, Dave. To kickstart your SEO requirements, I'd love to know which um, in a bit more about your business. What industry are you in? I think I'm going to be in, let's pick a random industry. I'm going to be in the flower pot industry. I don't know if the flower pot industry is doing well. If you think it is, let me know in the comments. And here we've got over £10,000. That's what we want our SEO budget to be. Sorry, I am just kind of flying through this example conversation here. But that's because at the end of the day, I just want to show you the integration as a whole, not just kind of the chatbot conversation. I'm sure we're all aware of what those are at this point. Okay, and obviously this is SEO, so it's asking which keyword we'd like to rank for number one in Google. And I'm going to go along the lines of something to do with flower pots. This is as I realize I don't know enough about the flower pot industry, so I'm just going to put best flower pot. Okay, perfect. So now it's kind of got all of that information, and it's just going to ask me what my name is. I'm just going to go dave at flowerpots.com. And then it's also going to ask a phone number. So as you can see, this is kind of all the information that ideally your sales team would like to have in their system so that when they kind of contact the lead, they're going to be in a great position to jump straight in with the conversation. They've already got a little bit of the information that they need and it's going to be a lot easier for them to close that sale. Okay, so now it's just asking what the phone number and now it wants a preferred date to kind of get someone to call back on. I'm going to go with uh, on a Sunday and I'm going to say it's Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Obviously as well, if you didn't want it to be on Sundays, you can obviously set that up. Okay, perfect. So someone, most likely Steve, is going to be in touch with us very soon. Okay, so now hopefully as on the screen, as you can see, the, that lead itself has now appeared within Airtable. Okay, so that's kind of how it looks for the user. Let's actually dive into how this works. If I head over into the integration section of Ubisend, now I'll just kind of a little bit about integrations and APIs if you are not yet aware. Um, or if you never really worked with them before, just also as a little bit of a pre heads up, I'm not a developer, I'm not a particularly techie person, but I've been able to kind of get my head around this and build this and make it so that it works. It look, can be a little bit daunting sometimes looking at different bits, but once you've kind of got into it and broken down what every bit means, it's not actually that difficult. So an integration with an API kind of works in two ways. There's two parts. There is part one, which is essentially connecting to the uh, data source or the app, so in this, case, in this case Airtable, and then there's part two, which is telling the app or the data source what you want to do. So in this case, pass a lead to Airtable. So part one is connect to Airtable, part two, pass a lead to Airtable. So let's break them down. Part one, how do we connect to Airtable? So if I click edit here, here we've got all these different sections of the integration. And at the top is just integration name, Airtable. This is just um, for internal use really, you can kind of call it whatever you want. You can call it Airtable CRM lead pass, all in capital letters for some reason, because I can't type, completely up to you. Up next as well, we've also got the base URL. So the base URL is your own unique identifier. And so this is saying when we're connecting to Airtable, but obviously we're not just connecting to the whole of every single Airtable account. We are connecting to my specific Airtable account and to this specific base URL. So what you can see there, that is the base URL. If you are interested in finding your own base URL, that's gonna be within all of the Airtable um, kind of developer documentation, which is what I've kind of jumped to on my screen now. This is where it can also start to look a little bit daunting if you're not 100% sure. 
But essentially, um, at the moment, as you can see, what I'm just looking at here is the authentication, which I'm going to come on to in a second. But this covers all the possible things that you can kind of do with an Airtable CRM uh, integration. If you do have a developer or you are a developer yourself, they're going to be able to look at this, completely understand it. It's very well written and very nicely done, which I know is a little bit unique depending upon the, uh, depending upon the API. But yeah, so there's an absolute mountain of stuff that you can do with a chatbot and kind of an API. This kind of covers just kind of touching on the surface specific for Airtable. But yeah, so this is kind of where you're going to be able to find your Airtable um, your Airtable base URL is going to be appearing within the authentication section, just kind of on the right along the side the screen there. Okay, perfect. Let's jump back in. So then we also have the authorization, and it does say here, authorize, I can't say that word for some reason today. Authorization credentials have already been set. That's because in typical Blue Peter sense, if anyone's aware of what that show is, this is one that we made earlier. And this is essentially authorization, authorization. If you look at an API as an, a door to a house, it's a door inside that platform or app, you obviously don't want to be going out and leaving your and letting people into your house without a key or not being a friend. So thankfully, I don't have very many friends, so I don't get to give a lot of keys out. But obviously, Airtable does have quite a few friends, so they have to give out keys to their platform and so that they can get in. And as you can see, authorization, that's basically what it is. It's just a key to the platform. So here, um, different APIs will work with different ways. They might, some might use an API key, basic, ba basic authorization. <laughs> really uh, bad day to be talking about integrations when you can't say that word, hey? But no, and then also bear, bear a token. This is kind of normally just set by the API. So this isn't the kind of thing that you'll just have to look through. If I just jump back in here, as you can see with auth auth authentication, <laughs> authorization and authentication, they both sound very similar and they're having a lot of trouble. But as you can see here, it's uh, based upon a, you've lost the words, but it's based upon the bearer token. Ooh, onto the wrong tab. And then essentially your bearer token or your API key, that's going to be found within your account setting of, a, of um, Airtable. So you can just head in and it will all be kind of by default kind of blurred out and you can kind of click reveal and copy to clipboard and control copy. And then you're going to be able to paste in your bearer token here. And then there we are, we've connected to Airtable, you have successfully opened the door, so to speak. What do you do then? Well, then we need to tell Airtable what we want to do. And how we do that is in the endpoint section. So that is point one or part one of setting up an integration complete. We have connected to the platform. Next, we're going to look into the different uh, endpoints, and this is where we tell the platform what we're doing, why we've connected to it. In the to carry on using the opening the door um, example, we've opened the door to our friend's house, and now we're telling them why we've turned up. So in this case, we are telling them that we are going to send a lead. That name, exactly the same as when you're creating an integration, is just for internal use. It can be send a lead now, all in capital letters, if you wanted to. That's just for internal use. It's not going to change anything. And then we have different options here. We have get, put, post, and delete requests. So this essentially is how you tell Airtable what you're doing or how you tell your integration what, uh, what it is actually that you're doing. So different, um, different, kind of, uh, different versions of requests have different uh, purposes. A post request essentially means we are pushing information to it. If you think we are, putting, we are posting information to that, uh, get request, obviously that means pulling information from it. So a nice example of this is if you say, um, have a huge amount of products on your website and you want to pull uh, relevant and up-to-date product information from your WMS, maybe like your warehouse management system. Maybe you're looking at, you know, how are things in stock. You're looking for kind of exact and up-to-date, maybe product specs that are all stored away in a different system. You're going to pull those, so you're going to get them. But in this specific example, as we are pushing leads to the Airtable CRM, we are going to post them to it. And then it's going to say, where are we making that request? And it, we're here we've got slash contacts. And that's because we are posting a lead and that's is stored within the contact information of Airtable. So the slash contacts, essentially, if I just jump over here, is this is referring to this area on my screen. As you can see, here's all the leads that we've kind of posted through as we've been doing these different live stream series. And this is within the CRM. So we are saying to it, we are going to um, make a request and we are going to post information to that slash contacts page, which is this page on the screen here. Okay, and now we kind of come onto the request body, and this is where we say exactly what we're doing. This is where it might also, if you're not really used to um, setting up integrations or working with APIs, it might look a little bit weird, maybe a little bit daunting. Honestly, it's really not. Once you start breaking it down, it's really simple. So um, essentially what this means is every set of curly brackets is kind of referring to the things within the curly brackets, which is a bad explanation. So let, let me get a little bit more into deal. So here we've got records. So essentially what we're saying is we're updating the records. And then next, within the records, we're going to update this specific fields. And then within that field section, so there we have this starting curly bracket here, this opening one, and then this closing one. That's saying within, we're going to update all of the fields within those two brackets. So we're updating everything here. 
And so we're going to update the email field, we're going to update the phone field, the name field, the industry field, the budget field, the keyword field, and the ideal meeting time. So these are all the fields that we're going to update, but what are we going to update them with? Well, we're going to update them with an email address, a phone number, a first name, and so on and so on. I'm not going to go through it all. And the reason that these are in curly brackets is because these are essentially variables. So what this means is every time a user engages with the chatbot, that curly curly um, curly, curly bracket email um, email underscore address close curly curly bracket that will change to be their email address. So it might be. I believe what was my original example um, that I did. It was something about Dave at Flowerpots, I believe, was the email address. So that is going to be replaced with depending upon the information. So, uh, for example, I could actually just go ahead and just put Dave at Flowerpots here. But that means that whenever a lead is passed into the Airtable CRM, it's always going to have their email address as Dave at Flowerpots.com, which isn't what we want. We want it to be unique for every user, which is why we're using variables. So I'll just um, go ahead and just refill that. And here we've got the email address variable and click choose and put the email address variable back in for the purpose. So as you can see, essentially it's just going to go through and just find all of, and it's going to update all of these different fields with these different kind of email address, with these different email address, sorry, with these different variables. How do we know which fields it is that we can update? Again, that's by referring back into the different um, into the different, uh, what do you call it, into the uh, developer documentation. So as you can see, you've got great records, and this is where it's gonna cover absolutely everything that we can include. Okay, perfect. So up next is, well, how does the chatbot know that we've given it this email address information, this variable, and how does it know? Where does it get this information from? Well, that comes from the conversation that we looked at, at uh, that we went through at the start of the, at the start of the video. So as you can see, this is the conversation we went through. If you remember, here, we, here it is asking for the pleasantries first. What is the name? And then we have this little thing here which says the little kind of variable um, Harry Potter lightning bolt logo there, first name. So if I click options and I click transitions, as you can see, we're going to transition to industry and it's going to save the variable as first name. So what that means is every time somebody inputs a bit of information, it's going to say, oh, that's their first name. Great, save that. And then if we jump back here, as you can see here, we've got na their name equals first name. So that will become whatever their name is. So in our case, it was Dave. And then essentially that process continues out throughout the entire conversation. So here it says, great to meet you, Dave. Then it asks about the different industry they're in and it saves that as a variable. And it goes on and it asks what their SEO budget is and it saves that as a variable. So it kind of goes through all that way, basically getting information from the user, saving that inf unique information. And then once it's all kind of gathered and it's all been completed, if we jump right the way down, all the way through, once this entire conversation has been completed, it's going to kick off and fire that integration. And it's going to basically then say to Airtable, here we go, pass this lead into the CRM. And it is going to do that at specific points of the conversation. So as you can see here, if I just jump into integrations, this is the very last step of the conversation. And it's going to say when they've reached this step, make a request to Airtable using the send a lead. So it says once they've reached that step, we're going to use this integration and we're going to fire this endpoint send a lead. So essentially all that's been happening is it's just been filling out this little bit of information here using information that the user provided when it reaches the end step it's going to press send and go really is that's kind of a quick overview of how to send a, um, a lead from airtable C um, from your chatbot sorry into airtable crm really nice really simple and really quick and really easy thing to set up if you want to see this done in a little bit more detail where it's kind of explained it takes about half an hour i believe the video um, the link to that is in the playlist um, that i mentioned at the start of the video in this description really great video to watch for a little bit more information but this has kind of been a bit more of a quicker run through of how to set up this integration i hope you've enjoyed it if you do ever have any questions feel free to throw them down in the comments we reply to pretty much every single question that we get asked so don't be afraid ask anything that you want and thank you all for watching